So let's talk about the Petzl Ervis Hybrid Crampon. I've been using this crampon for a few years now and I really like it. There's some things I don't like about it and there's other things that are awesome. So let's dive in. So hello and welcome, and before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to my channel. The button's just down below. Easy peasy. I'm just gonna say that I'm not sponsored by Petzl. Or I haven't had anything free from them in the past. This is just my honest review of these crampons and how they've performed for ski mountaineering and summer alpine climbing. So the crampon itself is, I wouldn't say one of a kind because there are definitely crampons similar to this, but I think Petzl have done a really good job of this type of crampon and let me explain why. So the design of the crampon is a string design and that, by that I mean it's connected by this string piece, the front and the back. And the front of the crampon is steel and the rear of the crampon is aluminium. And they have several different um, attachment systems that you can interchange for different boots so it can fit on a lightweight mountaineering boot it can fit on a heavier mountaineering boot you can also put this on a ski touring boot a ski boot anything um, it basically fits to pretty much anything that takes a cramp on this will work with for me i use this cramp on for everything except for technical climbing and where I'm going to be spending a lot of time on mixed terrain. So, you know, climbing over rock or, or uh, scrambling over a ridge or something. This crampon works really well for ski touring and ski mountaineering. Anything where you're exclusively on snow and you only need the crampon for a short period. I love the fact that it's got such a small pack size. It really helps with keeping the weight down on my backpack. So in this mode, the crampon is set up for a ski, to, a ski boot, I would say. It has the wire bale on the front and the clip-on strap at the back. So this works for boots that have got a fully rigid sole and a proper toe and heel welt that are just above the sole of the boot. So if, you're, if your boots have got that, this is how you should have it set up. Now you can also get a plastic toe and you can also get a plastic basket for the back as well. And that works really well if you haven't got anything, but you can mix and match between the two. Normally you would just be changing the, the toe wire for the plastic uh, basket at the front if you've just got a heel welt on your boot. The design of the heel piece, you have all these different kind of hooks on the aluminium and you change the length of the crampon by moving this string to the different positions. and you can get a reasonably good fit with most boots I, in my experience. But what I would say is the first time that you set them up, there'll always be a little bit of a stretch in the cord. So you set them up once, you probably use them once, and then you probably need to readjust them to make sure that these little turrets here are sat up against the back of the boot, uh, nice and flush. So, and also that the string is nice and tight, so they're not gonna pop off when you're using them. The plastic plates here are called anti-balling plates and I think these work pretty well on this one. One thing I would say is after time the small little metal pieces in here punch through the bottom of the um, anti-balling plate especially if you're walking on kind of rock on a ridge which I don't do a huge amount in these crampons but I do do a little bit of. Obviously the steel front points are much stronger than the aluminium back part and what I would say about that is these have lasted really well uh, at the front, but the back has worn out um, quite a lot quicker. You can buy replacement uh, heel pieces as you can buy replacement toe pieces, and you can also buy replacement string. What I would say about the string though is you buy these packets um, and it just seems a little bit too expensive really for a piece of string. I'm not sure how much it is. I'll, I'll uh, look it up and put it on the screen now but what I would say, it's a little bit too expensive for a piece of string. What I would say is it's definitely worth bringing a replacement string with you, even if you're not doing kind of um, 
mix stuff because what does happen over time is in here the string starts to get a little bit worn out by these grooves and you can see here it's starting to fray and I have actually replaced the string on the previous pair of crampons that I've had, uh, the exact same pair. I have actually replaced the string once uh, but it's definitely worth having a replacement string in your repair kit uh, especially if you're going to be using them on a hut to hut tour for example. I tend to leave my uh, strap buckle always buckled up and that, that way that when I put the crampon down I can just step in through here, clip the heel on and then tighten up the strap and that's the easiest way that I found for putting a crampon on and not have to buckle up this little buckle every time you use it. The bag is really good, it's a good size, it might be nice to have a small little loop or something on it so that you could maybe clip it to your harness. Otherwise I have been really happy with these crampons. They work really well for ski mountaineering, as I've said. Just be a little bit aware of the string. Make sure that they're adjusted properly. And yeah, they're not really designed for doing, you know, a long ridge scramble or something like that. The uh, aluminium points will wear out a lot faster than a steel backed crampon. Great. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave a like, leave a comment below. Let us know if you want anything else reviewed or if you want any other information about gear. Cheers guys, see you next time.